once I discovered the magic and mystery of the ocean, I knew that's what I wanted. That magic has taken Jane Lubchenco on a journey all the way from the slopes of the Rocky Mountains to the White House as the head of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, better known as NOAA. But Jane Lubchenco is no faceless bureaucrat. And we have a predator. She's still driven by a passion for understanding the complex ecosystem of the sea around us. It's in a defensive posture. Stay away from me, I'm fierce. Her fascination with nature actually began far from the ocean, in landlocked Denver, Colorado. I had five younger sisters, and we were water kids from the outset. We'd spend all summer, all day, in a lake not too far from Denver, and that's just what we did. We lived in our swimming suits all summer long, and it was heaven. Both of her parents were physicians. Mom was a pediatrician, and her father was a surgeon. So science and scientific discussions were part and parcel of our conversations. After high school graduation, she went on to attend Colorado College in the late 1960s. One of her professors helped her get into a summer program on invertebrate zoology at the famous Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. And man, I discovered this whole new world that I didn't know existed. All this life in the ocean, and I couldn't get enough of it. It wasn't long before this Rocky Mountain girl was turning most of her attention to rocky intertidal zones. She went on to grad school, where she researched rocky seashores on both coasts, first at the University of Washington and later at Harvard. Turns out that rocky seashores are a perfect laboratory because you can cage things in or out, you can move things up the shore or down the shore. Lubchenco examined the relationship between marine herbivores, like snails, and the plants they eat. She found that if a tide pool has very few snails, some seaweeds outcompete the other seaweeds. But if there are many snails, they tend to eat all seaweeds that are edible, which leaves just a few inedible species. The intermediate situation is where you have the highest abundance of seaweeds and you get a much richer mixture of seaweeds where the snails have intermediate abundance. It was a breakthrough discovery, and her papers on the subject have become scientific classics. Lubchenco took a post at Oregon State University where she soon found that she had even bigger things in mind. Over the years, my research has changed in many ways. One of them is the scale at which I do research, from just a small piece of a seashore to looking at large marine ecosystems and then even the entire biosphere, the whole planet. Because people have been changing the planet in ways that have been unprecedented. And that has led her to become more engaged in public policy. When President Obama was first elected, he made a commitment to name a number of scientists to what he called his science team. I was very honored to be asked by the president to come to Washington and lead the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and be part of the science team. But not long after she took the job, she was faced with an unexpected challenge, the massive Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. The oil spill was unprecedented. NOAA had a special role to advise the Coast Guard and make sure that they were making decisions based on science. Lubchenco was at the center of the government's response to the spill. It was very much an all hands on deck for the almost 13,000 people at NOAA. She also led an innovative effort based on science to end overfishing and restore coastal ecosystems. The ocean is being affected by so many different things right now. Overfishing, habitat destruction, climate change, ocean acidification. Lubchenco believes that these big problems can best be solved by negotiating what she calls a new social contract for science. I tell young scientists I think it's important that they learn to become bilingual. They need to speak the language of science, but it's equally important to make science more obviously relevant yeah. to decisions that people are making. We are citizens, we are part of this planet, we have responsibility for it, as well as responsibility to discover new knowledge. Okay, we have a cute little grass shrimp here. 